about enough time in the day to list all the favorite moments of Thank God for Kids. There are enough memories from that to last me two lifetimes. Thank God for kids, there's magic. Music videos were a big thing in the early 80s, and when I heard the Oak Ridge Boys singing that song, I knew there would be another one. David Handler and Lee Gonzalez found the pictures. We worked on it until about 3 in the morning one night. I told them to go home, and we'd finish in the morning. When I came back, they had stayed all night and had it done. Back then, nothing went on the air that I didn't change or fix in some way, but how could I possibly change that? I didn't. It was perfect. I've never changed a single frame, and I never will. A lot of people have said I should update the piece, get some new kids on there. But the Christmas movie, It's a Wonderful Life, is in black and white, stars Jimmy Stewart and Donna Reed. I don't want to see it in color with Tom Hanks and Julia Roberts. It's perfect the way it is. That's right. That's right. There are so many good stories. I'm playing blackjack at a casino in Shreveport. A man walks over, throws his billfold on the table, pops open to a picture of a beautiful young woman and says, do you know who that is? I promise him I don't. He says she's the little blonde girl at the beginning of Thank God for Kids. And you've cost me a fortune over the years because she moved to Paris and became a model. And every year I have to call her and hold the phone up to the TV so she can hear herself. Because you get toys and it's about Jesus' birthday. But I do think it's the stories I tell at the end of Thank God for Kids that have made it so special to so many of us for so long. I've written about too many kids who have died too young. Toby Wilson's son, who made Ben Hogan smile. The young girl from Maybank, Courtney Howard, took chemo for her cancer in the morning, then watched her hair fall out when she played basketball at night. But probably my favorite story is the one I didn't write. My mom died in 03, and I couldn't find the words. I just stared at a blank screen. Until one night, about four in the morning, I woke up and wrote the entire piece on a notebook I keep beside my bed. I didn't write it that year. My mom did. She had a very short fight with leukemia. She was in the hospital only six weeks. Every day, she wanted to get better and go home. She never did get better, but she finally went home. Two rounds of chemo, her doctor told us he didn't know if her heart was strong enough for the second round. That doctor knows a great deal about chemo and cancer, but he didn't know a thing about my mom's heart. She had a huge heart, so full of love and life, I actually thought mine would stop beating before hers did. I've always hated how I read it that night because I read it like the robot I had to be. I knew if I listened to the words, I couldn't finish. But I quoted a line from a George Jones song that described my mom perfectly. She stood in the shadows so that others could shine. She loved a lot at her time. I'm Dale Hanson. Good night. She stood in the shadows so others could shine. She loved a lot in her time. My Sports director Sean Hamilton surprised me with that ending. I cried as hard that night as maybe I ever have or ever will. But I will never forget what he did. And I will never forget and what that Oak Ridge Boys song has meant to me, and hopefully so many of you as well. I'm Dale Hansen. Thank God for Kids is number two.